we have details on James Fox's next movie. We have that and a lot more to talk about today. So get in here as Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, we've all been looking forward to James Fox's new documentary after his uh, bombshell moment of contact in the phenomenon. Um, earlier movies were also great, uh, particularly Out of the Blue was foundational for me in my own uh, UFO journey, uh, uh, discovering the reality of the phenomenon. Then I highly recommend it. If you have somebody you know that's on the fence about the phenomenon or is curious about the phenomenon, I highly recommend a double feature of Out of the Blue and the Phenomenon. Uh, a great foundation to have uh, in beginning one's research into this topic. Uh, but what does he have next for us, right? Uh, last movie was out of the, uh, was, excuse me, was Moment of Contact when he exposed the Virginia crash, uh, which is this crazy crash in South America where a uh, UFO crashed and some beings were walking around town and people were encountering them. Uh, tragically, they both died, uh, but not before, uh, you know, at least one of them was taken alive into custody. So, um, anyway, really interesting. So, so what's the guy next? Well, it's going to be called The Program. It's coming in late summer uh, 2024 and does include first-hand witnesses as well as sitting members of Congress. 2023 has been good, but also very tough. Let's kick some ass in 2024. And I know it's been very tough for him uh, dealing with uh, the, the company, his uh, production company or distribution company. That has apparently been uh, uh, not paying him what they owe him. It's my understanding that he's suing them uh, to get that money and also uh, hopefully to encourage them to pay other people that they have also not been paying. So, yeah, not cool, guys. Not cool. Uh, we don't really know any uh, more uh, details about the movie other than the title in this image, uh, which features James Fox and Chris Millen standing in front of the Capitol. Uh, again, he says he's going to have members of Congress in the movie. So, very exciting. Is he going to bring more whistleblowers forward, uh, more witnesses? You know, there was talk about uh, the pilot for, uh, in the Virginia case, uh, one of the pilots who were transporting the alien or non-human bodies uh, was supposed to come forward at some point, hopefully this year. Will that happen in the movie or will that, you know, uh, be a public thing through Congress and so forth? Uh, I, I kind of hope it goes through Congress. I want to see that testimony of uh, the gentleman who saw alien bodies from the Virginia crash testify before Congress. I think that would be amazing. Uh, but whatever I can get, I'll be happy with. Either way, Chris Mellon's going to be in it. We've got members of Congress going to be in it. It's called the program. Uh, does that mean the UFO program, as in the UFO control group? Uh, because that's what some call it, the program. Is that what he's talking about? I can't wait to find out. But James Fox isn't the only one that's going to make it a great year. Jeremy Corbell also says this year is going to start, a, start off as a UFO banger. It's a go, go, go UFO time, folks. Easy way or hard way. It's up to us. Do not relent. Do not slow down. Fight for what you want. Uh, that is, this is the moment we take control of the truth about UFOs. And of course, many others are saying uh, uh, very similar stuff, including people on the inside that are uh, talking about wrecking the furniture, like Lou Elizondo. They say things are going to heat up starting January. That's now, folks. Uh, and uh, so hopefully we'll get to see that. We've got Tim Burchett in a skiff coming up. We've got David Grush going back to Congress. We have uh, exciting things to look forward to in January. And we will see what those uh, pro-disclosure people uh, who are behind the scenes have in store for us. I'm really excited. But just what are we dealing with when it comes to ETs and UFOs? How much of it is nuts and bolts? How much of it is, you know, more esoteric or metaphysical or consciousness based? Well, Ross Coldart has some really interesting thoughts on a recent episode of Christina Gomez. He often talked about the fact that and he is uh, John Keel, the famous UFO researcher and metaphysical researcher, John Keel. He often talked about the fact that 
he felt that the the idea that this was just aliens wasn't it was not an explanation it, it couldn't possibly explain and he talked about the possibility that if you look at the way these objects have manifested themselves through history could it be that at the heart of all of this is a technology an intelligence that is capable of manipulating human perception i know this is a confronting idea but and i'm still working it through it myself but I'm struck by the fact that if you've read my book, you'll see I spend a lot of time talking about slide nine, which is an astonishing slide, a PowerPoint slide that was part of a briefing given to a very senior defense official by members of the UFO investigation program. And slide nine referred to the psychotronic capabilities of the phenomenon the fact that it seems to be capable of manipulating human perception and consciousness. And John Keel made the point that if you go back through history and look at what people were describing tens of thousands of years ago, often they described them in the context of things that they could relate to. Balls of fire are some of the early ones. Orbs, glowing orbs, wheels spinning within wheels. And then later on, for example, in the 19th century, when there was those weird floating airship sightings, ships floating above people, numerous sightings were made of these across the American Midwest in the 19th century. And then into our century, at the beginning of this century, you had um, uh, uh, rockets. Um, you know, is, is it possible? that what we're seeing here is a technology or an intelligence that's capable of manifesting itself to human beings in different ways. And so when we see black triangles, maybe it's trying to emulate, say, the conventional stealth aircraft of our era. When we increasingly see um, the more anomalous objects that have manifested themselves to pilots, for example, off the, uh, the west coast of America, the Tic Tac shaped object, could that be the newest manifestation of how the phenomenon wants to express itself to us? I don't know necessarily that we can accept automatically that this is a physical phenomena that is essentially a fixed piece of technology. And I'm still working my way through that, but increasingly I'm struck by the fact that so many of the people who I talk to who claim knowledge of the subject matter tell me that we can't ignore, that we have to look at the consciousness aspect, the psychotronic aspects, the capacity of whatever this phenomenon is to manipulate human perception and consciousness. Well, it definitely has the uh, power to manipulate perception and consciousness. Uh, a lot of it does seem to be consciousness-based and more metaphysical, even spiritual. Uh, what does that mean, though? Because you can touch it, you can feel it, you can reverse engineer it. Uh, you know, there is a nuts and bolts component to this. Does it manifest into this reality from a higher reality? And once that happens, uh, you can uh, wrap your knuckles on it. Uh, what, what is the deal? Um, you know, it's hard to say. My mind goes back to uh, the recent comments by Ryan Bledsoe talking about his dad's experience, uh, Chris Bledsoe, when uh, in 2004 he had his UFO encounter or his, um, you know, encounter with the beings, whatever they were. And there was this vessel made of light that came to him. And when he was taken aboard it, um, you know, he was seeing uh, buttons and levers and dials. Uh, but he was given to understand that these weren't real buttons and levers and dials necessarily. You know, maybe if he had touched them, they would have worked like a button. Uh, but they were representatives of something else. They were representing uh, a, a different reality because these beings didn't come from our reality. Then they didn't have buttons uh, where they were. Uh, so, but when they came in to this reality and were representing their craft to him, that's how his mind saw them. That's how they represented themselves or the technology represented itself was as buttons and levers. And I think that's really interesting. And I think that's kind of how the phenomenon is often. It represents to us what we are prepared to accept. Uh, that is true in near-death experiences as well. And uh, often throughout the phenomenon, we see what we are prepared to accept. In the late 1800s, they were prepared to accept 
uh, the idea of airships. They had balloons. They had fantastic stories about fancy balloons. So it wasn't a huge extrapolation to see some crazy airships. Uh, in the 1950s, you know, you had a lot of more nuts and bolts UFOs. Uh, these days, you have uh, fewer nuts and bolts UFOs. You have more anomalous, more other dimensional sort of UFOs. Now, uh, are they really other dimensional UFOs? Very likely. But it also could be the phenomenon representing itself uh, in a way that we are now able to understand because we have a concept of dimensions that we may not have had, uh, you know, 50 years ago or 100 years ago. So, you know, what is the truth behind the phenomenon, uh, this ever-shifting uh, phenomenon that can indeed, as he says, mimic our stealth fighters and our black ops craft? Uh, James Lukaski was talking about that recently, and uh, when they were studying UFOs, uh, they saw that they were seeing hundreds of these black triangles, and uh, they realized it was the phenomenon mimicking the black triangles of the uh, UFO control group. So uh, that is fascinating. It mimics us. It evolves uh, according to our own evolving consciousness and understanding and ability to accept. Uh, so what is the ultimate truth behind the phenomenon um, since it does shift and change so much uh, according to what we can accept? What we can accept? Uh, when will we be able to accept the full truth? And what is that truth? Let me know what you think in the comments below. While we're talking about near-death experiences and strange stuff, uh, Robert Bigelow, who spent more money than anyone on Earth trying to study UFOs, I mean, more money than any civilian anyway, uh, and now he doesn't. He doesn't spend his money on UFOs. What does he spend it on? He's 100% in on the near-death experience life after death research. Uh, and that is true. Bob Bigelow is heavily involved and uh, near-death experience research. And he, he's still pursuing, however, uh, nuts and bolts UFOs and you know, partnering with NASA. I, I don't know how that is going. I know there was some, uh, uh, there was some rockiness there, but I, I'm hoping they're over the hump now. Uh, you have the Bigelow modules in space now, which could be a really a game changer for, or, for how our astronauts uh, live and work in space. Uh, but he is absolutely uh, pursuing study of consciousness and near-death experiences and the metaphysical aspect of the phenomenon, what I call the greater phenomenon. Uh, the UFO uh, phenomenon is a subset of a much larger phenomenon I call the greater phenomenon, uh, and that includes all the meta metaphysical, trippy, weird stuff, as well as Bigfoot and uh, cryptids and uh, portals and all the other weirdness. Uh, it, it's all connected somehow. How that is, I don't know, but if you have any ideas, let me know what you think in the comments below. But back to more practical, hands-on physics. Uh, check this out. This is wild. Each second, 1.5 million tons of solar material traveling at hundreds of miles per hour shoot off the sun. Earth's magnetic field deflects most of it, but not all. The solar wind, a stream of charged particles, flows at 447 uh, kilometers per second. And while the magnetic field protects us, some particles still cause auroras and geomagnetic storms. And look at that beautiful animation uh, of uh, the Earth's uh, electromagnetic field protecting us uh, from this solar bombardment. And that is crazy. Look at this, guys. We have a magical force field that protects the Earth. I love it. Although it's alarming, uh, if, that, if that thing ever fails for a second, uh, we may be in trouble. But just a beautiful animation and uh, important to consider that we really are living on a magical world with a, uh, you know, a magical, albeit uh, physics-derived uh, force shield uh, with a moon that may have been artificially placed there. Makes you wonder. Okay, I'm not sure if this is related to... Uh, uh, UFOs or consciousness or not, but it might be. Either way, it's pretty cool. Check out this. This is an octopus disguising itself as some sort of crazy sea monster uh, to protect itself. Okay, look, look at this thing. Okay, we, we've got a pause. We've got a pause right there. How does this octopus know 
uh, you know, how to disguise itself as a sea monster. I mean, how does it know that? I mean, I know octopi are supposed to be smarter than you would uh, think they would be. Uh, but look at it. I mean, it's got eyes, right? Where the eyes would be. It's even got something that looks like nostrils and, uh, you know, the big nose right there. And uh, the eyebrow ridges and everything. I mean, how does it know to do that? Surely it can't conceive, uh, you know, conceptually of, of an observer being over here looking at it. Uh, looking where the eyes would be, etc. How does it know to do that, guys? I mean, yeah, instinct is an easy answer, but but really, I mean, how? It's just that's just amazing. I, I love it. I don't know what it means, but it's cool. Okay, that's it for today. Hoping that we have a great 2024, and that by the end of the uh, the year, we'll have mantis beings and greys and Bigfoot and Mothman all holding hands and singing Kumbaya with ghosts and UFOs. Uh, while we all have a party in the forest and I drink lots of good alien wine. Uh, I love it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about all of these items. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below uh, in Discord. Uh, so uh, check those out. And if you wanted to support Cosmic Road in an even bigger way, please consider grabbing a t-shirt or a coffee mug in the merch store or by becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars, and I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there's plenty of other videos to check out on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.